Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market, where finally we're getting to these guys. How about that? Some of y'all were like, when's it gonna happen? It's happened. Now, the scientific name for this lovely specimen in this tall pot, for decoration purposes, is Begonia ex semperflorens cultorum, commonly known as the wax begonia. In this variety, specifically, this is the pink flowering copper leafed type. I'm not seeing the copper, but that's okay. I always like the, they do have a coppery sheen in better lighting, but that's okay. We're not judging. There's the, there are basically three bedding begonias that you will find at the store, and this is one of them. I'll get into that in a moment. Now, this plant belongs to the Begoniaceae family. The specific epithet, Semper Florens, Semper means always, and Florence means flowering. Cultura means relating to gardens and or cultivation, indicating that it is a man-made cultivated hybrid. It's another way of saying basically the same thing. It's originally native to South America and is now hybridized into a plant that is worldwide. Now that's interesting. I wasn't aware that our common wax begonia was from South America, but you learn interesting things when you do research for these videos. Now it is hardy in USDA zones 9 through 12, but it's an annual in 8 through 1 if you leave it outdoors. The proviso is if you bring it in as a house plant or you take cuttings, it's effectively perennial. I'll cover cuttings and how to take cuttings of this plant in a moment. Anyway, its soil pH preference is 5.5 to 6.5, and it prefers soil with lots of organic matter. Its fibrous roots chew right through that stuff. In addition to this, its exposure is full sun to shade depending on the specific variety. Now I have these things in partial shade. They get morning sun, and then in the afternoon they're spared from the laser southeastern sun. And I did that partially to get them acclimated to where they're eventually going to go. But anyway, the height is 10 to 34 inches depending on the cultivar, and the width is 8 to 28 inches depending on the cultivar, because there are, there are tons of wax begonias to suit your fancy. Bedding plants are notorious for having wide varieties of options. The three most common that you will find, and this is, again, one of them, is the bronze leaf type, the, there's a type, I can't remember the exact name of it, but there's a dark leaf type, and then there's the light green leaf type, and they come in three or four color ranges a piece, which is white flowered, pink flowered, or red flowered. And this one is obviously selected for pinkish flowers, but there's darker pinks than this. I'm okay with it. In fact, if you look in the back, this right here is what the flower looks like when it's about to open. This is what it looks like when it's open. And the best part is that this plant is self-deadheading. Once these flowers are spent, they just fall right off automatically. No fuss, no muss. It's a self-cleaning plant. What's not to love? Now, it has another name, and this is the name that I know to classify it by since I was a wee little pre-horticulturist fibrous rooted begonia because there is three types that you know the, there may be more types now but there are three types in all of my garden books from way back when fibrous rooted ta -da! cane begonias which is usually angel wing or devil's wing begonias which actually we'll cover in a later video and then tuberous begonias three different begonias for three different growing situations and they're all lovely now anyway Here's how this plant came to be. The Begonia Cocalata. Wow, that sounds like something you get from a coffee shop, huh? Anyway, in my searches, actually will come up instead of Begonia Semperflorens for some reason. They share a common name, but they aren't quite the same thing. And based on what I can find, Cocalata may have been one of the parent plants or the parent plant from which this lovely specimen was hybridized from. Now, there are some suggestive information, there's information from a bunch of sources, including some of my garden books, that state that uh, Begonia semperflorens is at least a hybrid of five Begonia species, including Cocolata and a few others. And that makes for some serious, I mean like Begonia orgy? 
I mean, like, do we need to start turn, putting, putting in that 70s music with the, you know, in the background? I wonder. But what happens in the fields or the greenhouses at night stays in the greenhouses at night. We don't judge. Now, uh, here's something interesting. Begonia flowers are edible. I've had them on some of the houseplant begonias before, and they're kind of tart. Maybe a, the variety, at least I tasted, was tart, sort of cherry, strawberry-ish. It's hard to describe, really. Uh, begonia stems and tubers are toxic to cats. So, yeah, you don't want to let your uh, little fluffy nibble on this. Don't nibble this. Now, here's the interesting thing. Begonias can be, this wax begonias, can be grown as a houseplant. Basically, you bring them in and protect them from freezing. They will survive low temperatures just as long as they're not too low. And uh, they'll actually obviously get bigger. I mean, these plants were bought as a four-cell pack at a normal nursery at normal price. And I stuck them in there, and I'm just letting them do their thing. I was waiting for them to fill in so I could do this video, but... Um, you can take cuttings of these, actual stem cuttings that are at least four to six inches long will root in a cup of water. So there is that option for growing more of these later on. But in the meanwhile, this plant could be brought in, fertilized a bit, and then just maintained with enough water to keep the soil regularly moist but not wet, and it'll overwinter indoors. So that is another option for using these plants uh, beyond. Then you can segue it back out in spring after danger, is fro after danger of frost has passed. And that's wax begonias for you, really. I mean, they're a bedding plant, much like impatience and geraniums and a few others. They're available at every nursery in creation. In a multitude of forms, shapes, and if you eat the flowers, probably flavors. And they're very simple and straightforward. They don't really get pests that I know of, but I have seen sickly begonias get root rot because they're, well, not sickly, begonias get root rot because they're watered too often or they're allowed to sit in puddled water. I have seen them get frost damage. Um, sometimes the slugs can be a problem if it's an especially wet spring, but beyond that, largely they're trouble free and they're predictable you know exactly what you're getting. There's no guesswork, there's no maybe, it's a great plant. So, that's Wax Begonias for you folks. And um, if you have any comments on Wax Begonias, if you've grown them, if you have any tricks or tips for growing them, uh, please leave them in the comments section. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. In the video description, you'll see a link to the forage blog where we talk about forage weeds that you can eat in the field and how to prepare them and consequently a few poisonous ones thrown in there just to warn you not to trick you but to say you stick this in your face you shall die so with that said thank you for watching and as always folks keep them growing